What up, though? And welcome to the Boss Up Ball Live podcast, your trusted source for Detroit Lions news and rumors. It's your man, Kurt Steele. Hey, do us a favor. Like the video and share it with other Lions fans just like yourself. If you like the content, subscribe to the channel. Now it's time to bring in my co-host for today. First up is our resident defensive line coach and executive chef, the Wolver Lion, Coach Mike Jones. What's going on, Coach? What's going on, man? How y'all doing today? Man, and y'all know who it is. It's the adventure of Thirsty Thursdays, baby, over mm-hmm. on Instagram. It's my man, LL Cool Torrance. What's going on, my G? What's up, y'all? Good morning. Happy Monday. Okay. If you're new to the channel and you don't know how the show works, here is how we get down right here on the Boss Up Ball Out podcast. We look at Lions news, headlines, or takes. If we agree, we say it's bossed up. If we disagree, we say it's balled on, and we give our reasons why we agree or disagree. Now, it's time to take a look at the topics of today. Who are the Lions' biggest threats in the NFC? Lions' offensive skill position players or the uh, playmakers ranked third in the NFC North by ESPN. And is it really Super Bowl or bust, like they say over there, over on my man, Dew Crew, uh, live Lions, Nate, uh, Lions Talk Live. You know how he says it, Super Bowl or bust. But we're gonna get into all that. But first of all, I'm gonna kick it to my man, Coach Mike Jones. He's gonna talk about who is the biggest threat to the Lions this year in the NFC. Yes, sir. And I got three of them. I got three people. First off, you got to start with the Green Bay Packers, right? Because first of all, they're in a division. They're going to be in the race with the Lions in the division. So in order for us to get to the playoffs, and yes, I say us, because we are the Detroit Lions. Y'all, y'all better know what it is, man. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the Green Bay Packers, man, because the Green Bay Packers have added to what was already a nice team. Um, they, are, they added Josh Jacobs, who I still consider to be – a top five all-purpose back, um, three-down back. So uh, when you add that to the mix, I feel like the Green Bay Packers, and they're in our division because some people say the NFC North might be the division to send two teams. Who knows? Uh, They can only send one team. So we got to beat out the Green Bay Packers to get to the playoffs first and foremost. Uh, Number two, the San Francisco 49ers. I mean – you can't you can't argue with it, man. They done been to, I think, three Super Bowls in like the past fifteen years. Two two Super Bowls in the past five years. They've been to four of the last five NFC championships. I mean, you just can't. You know what I'm saying? You can't. Uh, you can't deny that, man. The culture they built there is um is just is, is right now a second and nine in the NFC. We trying to get there, uh, but as of right now, they're the top dogs. You can't really argue with it. And the third and final team is our mofo selves, man, because we should have went to the Super Bowl, okay? We should have went to the Super Bowl, but then, you know, you got into Mir Giz with his, you know, his fumble out of nowhere. Uh, Kendall Vildor just bouncing off his helmet, and and just Josh Reynolds just all of a sudden, he, <laughs> he, <laughs> he can't catch the ball all of a sudden when he's the most reliable guy besides Amon Ra um, in the receiving core, and – you know, it, and, you know, some questionable calls by Dan Campbell. Um, I think the biggest threat to the um, Super Bowl is ourselves. So, um, with that being said, um, I want to ask you guys, do you guys agree that these are the top three teams or do you guys want to slide a team in there? And also I ask the, the viewers out there, put in the comments section, do you agree or do you think there's another team, man? So, Kurt Steele, I see you shaking your head, man. So, what, what you yeah. got? All right. So, I'm going to say it's what your what your take is. I'm going to say it's bossed up, and I'm going to give you my reason why I think that the last reason is the reason for it. All right. For me, I think the biggest threat to the Lions in the NFC is themselves. Here's why I, uh, I think that. I know that Dan Campbell and his coaching staff, and the leaders on the team will keep the Lions from getting ahead of themselves. They won't let them get the big heads or feel themselves saying, hey, we the best. They're not going to do that. Uh, they're going to push those guys and keep those guys uh, where they need to be. 
Uh, my worry is, is that can the young players handle adversity? Because we've got some uh, young additions to this team. We're going to see what happens, man, if someone gets hurt or they lose a tough game like Dallas last season. Can they bounce back or step up when needed? Because, like I said, you have a young guy, Terry Arnold, is, you know, is projected to start. And you look at the young players, you know, like Sam LaPorter and Jameer Gibbs. What happens to with them, you know, in their sophomore year if, if they have a slump or something? Can they get back to where they were last year? And to me, uh, if the Lions can, afford, uh, can avoid making key mistakes in those moments like they did last year, there's no reason why I don't see them going to the Super Bowl. And the reason being is because that the schedule sets up. Uh, for them, I mean, I'm going to touch on it a little bit later, but it, I think that the biggest the biggest uh, one for me right now is the Lions making sure that they can get out there uh, themselves and get out of their own way and make it to the Super Bowl. I think if they can do that. So the biggest threat in the NFC for me is the Detroit Lions is themselves. I, I have to say that. All right. What you got, Ella? Um, I agree with all of that that you gentlemen just said. Um, I will only add one um, NFC wise, and I would say probably Philly. I don't think Philly is gonna, um, you know, have the same season that they had last year. I think they're gonna come back and actually be something to talk about. But um, no, I agree with you guys. Well, I guess for the whole take, I agree. This is a um, bust up take. I agree. Then um, the Lions are the biggest threat to themselves. Um, Coach Mike, I remember I had tweeted it, and I think you had retweeted or one of the, I knew you interacted with the post. But I just when it was like talking about the schedule, or it was the schedule release. I said they really can win all of these games if they really want to, and by really want to is go out there and win those games. I don't see an unbeatable team on this um, on the schedule this year. And there isn't a Ravens or a Chiefs or anything like that. And we beat the Chiefs last year. We got smoked by the Ravens, but it's not one of those kind of teams on the schedule. So. Um, not to say that we're going undefeated or nothing like that, but just the season, I don't feel like there's um, – I don't fear very many of the teams um, that we have in front of us. Of course, Green Bay is in our division, so that's a, a, a viable threat. Um, uh, the 49ers, because they are the last year's NFC champions and they don't seem to – you know, don't seem like they fell off very much. So um, I believe that they're a viable threat. But, yeah, I also would throw Philly in there, and I agree that, of course, we are the number one threat to our city. All right. All right. Hey, do us a favor. Like the video. Share this content with more Detroit Lions fans just like yourself. Uh, we're we're getting close to our goal of 2000 uh, by the end of, of August. So we're at 1659 right now. So go ahead. Hit the subscribe button. And, you know, it's free. It's free, free. It's free 99 and 53 cents. So go ahead. Hit that subscribe button, man. Help the brothers out right here on the Boss Up Ball Out podcast. All right. Next up. Woo. I, I swear I looked at this list and I was I was a little bit like, what? All right. So uh, the Lions offensive skill position players, particularly the playmakers, were ranked third in the NFC by Bill Barnwell of ESPN. If you look at this, Bill Barnwell rated the Lions skill players um, seventh overall on his list. Now, skill position players mostly uh, – but the most time include off uh, the quarterbacks, the running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. However, this list excluded quarterbacks, they said just playmakers. So the Bears were ranked number six on the overall list. And then the Vikings came in at number five. So that gave us the third in the division overall. Because if you look at uh, the, the Packers being the only team that's rated lower or, or higher than us, lower than us, uh, that put us third in the division. Now, this take is a major, because I'm going to call it first. I think this is balled on, not bossed up, man. I know people will say, well, look at the Bears, what they added this offseason. Keenan Allen, Roma Duze, uh, they mentioned, he mentioned Cole Komet and DJ Moore, uh, part of that receiving core, which is a good receiving core. I ain't going to lie to you and say it ain't good, but then their feature back is running back Khalil Herbert. Okay, he's a good guy. I won't say he's, I don't know, uh, I'm not saying he's the best. I'm not saying he's good, you know. Now, we look at Minnesota. We know what Justin Jefferson can do. Jordan Addison is a talented young route receiver. And then TJ Hawkinson, once he gets healthy, uh, their feature back uh, is Aaron Jones. We know who he is because he came over from the Green Bay Packers. Now, 
this, like I said, I think this is balled on for me. The reason being is that on either team, right, the Bears or the Vikings, one thing I do not see that I see on the Detroit Lions, I don't see a first team all pro or a second team all pro mm. because we know St. Brown was a first team all pro at wide receiver and Sam Laporta was second team all pro. And guess what I didn't see? Mm. The depth at running back because guess what the Lions have? They have two, count them, two running backs that can put up a thousand yards on the ground. Just saying. I mean, I don't see that. I see one maybe on each roster with Josh Jacobs and Aaron and Aaron um, uh, Jones over there in Green Bay. I mean, uh, in Minnesota. But uh, AJ Dillon's not a thousand yard back. He's just not. And then Jamison Williams is set to have a monster season at wide receiver, wide receiver number two. For me, just for me, y'all let me know. I'm just saying, this is a bald on tape. You look at what the Lions are bringing back on offense, man, at skill position wise, and you look at Jameer Gibbs, Sam Laporta, you know, those guys are only second year players, and they are one of the two of the top players at their position in the entire NFL. So for me, this is a bald on take. My man, Coach Mike Jones, man, you up first, man. What do you think about the Bill Barnwell ranking the Lions offensive skill position playmakers third in the NFC North and seventh overall? That is a Boston uh, take right there, man. He got to be out his damn mind. Um, first and foremost, like you said, Kurt, Sam Laporta and Jameer Gibbs are the best at their position in the whole division. So when you take that they didn't include the quarterbacks and you say there's three position groups, running back, tight end, and wide receiver, and we got two of the best, two the two best in that in those groups, how can you rank us third? Uh, you can say that, you know, our receivers are unproven or something like that, man, but that's that's just one position group. So we if we top two out of three, then how can you put us third? It don't make sense to me, man. I just balled on. Yeah, definitely. All right, what you got, LL? Of course, there's a ball don't take, man. They got us third in the NFC North. Like, I mean, like, if we seventh overall and we third in the NFC North, that means we still in the top of the NFC, but Still, man, no, nah, not not a chance in 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 this world. Um, well, I shouldn't say that, but <laughs> nah, man. Um, Green Bay, um, they have those young wide receivers and all of that. Maybe that's why they did that. Um, they have young tight ends and um and they and they brought over um Josh Jacobs, not the not the um, I guess wish bad on him, but let's not forget. I don't know if y'all seen that clip um of him earlier this off season. He uh, was riding on the four wheeler and flipped off that mug. I'm guessing he's okay. But one thing that I would like to bring up is a few years ago, um, kind of similar, uh, sort of similar situation. Um, Lamar Jackson was seen in a, a video clip um, playing beach football, end up uh, hurt or uh, you know running and and falling down and flipping over and stuff like that. And they said he wasn't hurt or you know he, he was okay and everything, but he ended up missing uh, some some significant time by the end of that season. A lot of people forgot about that whole you know um, summer thing and all that. Not saying it was correlated, but it probably was. So again, not saying that he's going to be hurt, but let's just say maybe he's feeling some after effects from that. And I don't, um, even if Josh Jacobs is fully healthy, the green Bay, the green Bay Packers offensive line isn't really that good. So I know they only count in the skill positions, but the offensive line is going to help that skill position. So wouldn't put them there. And then green Bay, um, of course, where they got, uh, Justin Jefferson, who everybody loves. They got Jordan Addison, who's a really good football player. Um, the tight end is hurt right now. So, um, you know how we gonna you know do with that, and then they they brought over Aaron Jones, and you know not to say he's you know recycled, but I, and I actually like Aaron Jones, but I don't really see what he's gonna do. And again, Vikings offensive line isn't really that good. And they're I I think that their offensive line is worse than the Packers, and he didn't have that great of a season for the Packers last year until they actually wanted to run the football. So um yeah, with all that being said, yeah, of course I think that's a ball don't take, and I think we're the best offense in the um in the division, and probably the conference. Yeah, the definitely. best. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I just look at this list, man, and I was like, yeah, you, you're missing the mark. It, and, and you look at – and one for me, you look at it, one thing that makes those skill positions better uh, is the quarterback, right? So you look at what they have in Chicago. You look at what they have in Minnesota. Their their quarterback position is really unsettled. Uh, you have two or, or 
really with J.J. McCarthy and Caleb Williams, two rookies that are unproven. And we all have seen what Sam Darnold is <laughs> capable of doing. Right. Turnover machine. So, yeah, hey, we, we all agree that that's a, a, a bald on take, man. Get out of here with that mess. All right, my man, LL, you up for last, man. Do you up? We got to talk about this dang going Super Bowl. Or, but what you got, my brother? And really, this is just truly a question. Like, what, number one, like, what does that mean when they say we are Super Bowl or bust? Because normally when I hear that, you see a team that's kind of close, and then they start making some real, you know, real, uh, I don't want to say desperate, but real um, uh, all-in moves. You know what I'm saying? Um, are we all-in? You know, they say that, you know, they go out and get, in that case, maybe, you know, in that case, maybe we will go out and spend on a, um, on a guy to play outside of uh, Hutch or, you know, go out and spend on a, another DB or something, you know, go out there and maybe sign a Justin Simmons or somebody like that. I don't, I'm not sure if we are all in in that case, you know, I feel like, and another thing that, or another reason why I don't necessarily know if it's this year is Super Bowl or bust, because if bust means that we ain't doing nothing else, that's, that's completely inaccurate. Cause we, I feel like we are building this for sustained success. We are building this for this year and next year and the year after that and the year after that. So if this year is a Super Bowl or bust, I, I don't I don't agree with that because um, I don't I truly don't believe that we are all in. We have added uh, pieces. We added what we needed in the interior defensive line. Um, we added a, a, a cornerback and Carlton Davis, but you know I don't I feel like we're not complete. I don't believe so. I don't think we're all in at all. Um, and by MCDC effect, I would say um, this is something that uh, Kurt had brought up earlier. Uh, well, I believe my, my, if I'm if I'm uh, it might have been Mike who had said it, but um, just no, it was Kurt uh, who brought up um, Dan Campbell's ability to get the guys, um, you know, just so they won't get the big head. My and my uh, take on it, I would say he would keep them from being too low from last year. Is you know all they want to focus on is the loss from last year. He's going to have them ready and over that loss and ready to go out there and you know and fight and, and bite some kneecaps. At least that's my um, expectation. So. Um, are we all in this year? I mean, well, is Super Bowl a bust? Are we all in? Have we made the moves to be all in? Are we? Do you guys feel that we are all in and we've done those things? We still haven't traded any uh, draft capital to, capital to get a, um, a a big name or anything like that, or you know, we haven't made a, a splash signing to bring in somebody who you know who a name rather that would, that would play outside of Hutch, not just a player but a name. So, um, and then like I said, uh excuse me, the MCDC effect. I truly believe that he he won't let them, um, you know, harp on that loss from last year. He'll have them ready to go out and fight and everything like that. But what do you guys think? All right. So for me, uh, in a Super, Super Bowl of bus, I'm going to say that's bald on. I, I don't, I agree with you. I don't think that it is Super Bowl or bus. Um, and you look at it for a couple of reasons. I don't think it's Super Bowl or bust because of the youth on this team. You talked about how young this foundation of this team is. You look at a lot of the starters, first, second year, third year players. Uh, however, I think the schedule sets up in favor. Uh, you only have three outdoor games this year. And with the Bears being the only cold weather game, because um, you got you got San Francisco later in the year, but that's not going to be that cold. So and the Bear and the excuse me, the Packers are we play them early in the year at Lambeau. So golf and the offense are set up to succeed. If the defense can play better in the secondary, there's no reason the team can't be a new owners in February. But I believe that if they do not make the Super Bowl, I don't think that it is, you know, a bust because they have a young nucleus and they're able to add pieces on. And the way they set those contracts up for Amon Ross St. Brown, Penny Sewell, and Jared Goff, they can move some money around and make it where they can actually keep signing some players. And we still have a lot of money under the cap. So um, mm -hmm. they're going to roll that over and re-sign. I mean, you know how Brad Holmes operates. He says he wants to sign his own players. He doesn't, he's not a big component of bringing in outside guys, you know, here and there for agency. The only trade we had was for Carlton Davis. And did we give up a lot for him? Absolutely. I don't think mm -hmm. so. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a, a ball don't take. I don't think it's Super Bowl or bust this year. I think it's, uh, improving what we had last year. And, but I don't think that there's a reason why we can't make it to New Orleans in February. What you got, Coach Jones? Man, I gotta, I'm sorry, I gotta disagree with y'all, man. That, that's a, that's a bossed up take, man. And the reason being is because you guys are right. We are set up for set for success in the long haul, but they're talking about just this year, and the just this year, 
you went to the NFC Championship, right? So if you don't go to the Super Bowl, you kind of just, you kind of mid. You staying the same. And if you staying the same, you're getting worse. Uh, I mean, technically speaking. And um, I do think the Lions will be all in because I do think that they will make a move before the trade deadline because uh, you'll have time to evaluate your roster and you'll say, okay, maybe this guy got injured. Maybe we're missing this. This would be the last piece to get to the Super Bowl. I think they will make that move. So I'm I'm, I'm bossed up on that take right there. All right, man. Hey, that's our show for the day. But, man, we had some good times today. We talked about uh, who's the biggest threat to the Lions this year. Bill Barnwell's raking the skill position or, or playmakers in the uh, Lions third in the NFC, seventh overall in the league. And in the Super Bowl, the bus, man. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Do us a favor. Like the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the video and share it with more Detroit Lions fans just like yourself. And if you want to see us outside of the platform, man, go ahead and follow us on your favorite social media platforms. They're up on the screen. And if you don't see them, if you can't, just click it on the screen or do a, a, a quick screen grab. Go ahead. The links are in the description of this video. All right. Parting shots for the day, man. What you got, LL? Um, happy Monday, everybody. If you like this shirt, it's on that website that you see right there. <laughs> <laughs> MyHighStuff.com. And have a great day. All right. What you got, Coach Jones? It's the beginning of the work week for a lot of people. So, uh, you know, with that being said, just have a positive attitude, man, going to a work week and uh, just be a new person and try to be the best you that you can be, man. That's what you always say, Kurt. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Hey, you know what you got to do for your man, Kurt Steele. Whatever you do in life, you got to boss up, ball out, and be the best version of you that you can be. For my fellas, LL Cool Torrance and the War of a Lion, Coach Mike Jones. This is Kurt Steele, and we will holler at you real soon.